Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. Welcome to the Lillian Sam Show. We will be having topics on magic, including lore, material data, ancient and new practices in most pagan areas with a strong focus on Norse paganism. We will explore historical sources and scientific sources as well. We will be discussing herbs, basics for new learners, and more advanced practice. My background is 30 years of medicinal study. I'm actually a nurse uh, in real life. We'll also be checking out lucid dreaming, teaching you how to do that, automatic writing, scrying, and apothecary work. Additionally, I'll provide scientific and historical data, archaeological finds, and saga analysis. Sam, who is currently getting set up to be able to join us, will provide her own expertise in an introduction once she is able to get with us. We're planning a series of tarot education where we'll do, we will do a video on each individual card with description and explanation of divination techniques. Once we've gained a larger following, um, we'll be doing that, and it'll be a big series. So please share our stuff, like it, comment on it to help us grow. That's how the algorithm algorithms work. So please, please do that. That will help us so much. Uh, the information that we provide is not all encompassing, and it'll require you to do your own studies. So it's merely a starting point. Um, everybody has their own practice. And so you adapt and you take what you learn and use it for your practice as you see, see fit. Take what you need, leave what you don't. We welcome all comments as long as they're informative and constructive. Um, Merry Meet. This is the first video that we'll, uh, we'll be doing. And I'm just going to do go over some very basic um, language that you'll hear throughout our videos, just to make sure that you know what these words mean. So, if you're well informed, if you already know, so be it. But these are very basic uh, words and phrases that we will be using. So I'm going to go through and explain them really quickly. So banishing is, um, it bends or turns negative in energy. The purpose of a banish banishing ritual uh, sends unwanted energy back where it came from, dispersing it. It dispels its power. And then there's transmutation. That's anything that changes one thing into another. It's kind of an alch alchemical word in, his, in history, alchemy was always trying people trying to transmute like lead or something into gold. So they were trying to do that. But transmutation in the magical sense is not necessarily that. It can be transmuting your spirit from a lower level to a higher level. That could be uh, when you're transmuting. It's just con converting one thing into another thing is what transmutation is. Okay, setting intention. So this is super important. If you're going to do a spell and you're, or a ritual or any kind of focus work, you want to set your intention. You want to know how to mentally set your intention. What are you trying to do? Setting intention is the backbone of rituals because you don't want to have the wrong intention or have your thoughts be straying from the point of your ritual or your spell. So learning how to set your intention is very important, especially when you're beginning. And I cannot stress that enough. It's just really the crux of everything that you're going to do going forward in your practice. So the next thing I want to talk about is scrying. That is like a meditative state while staring into a reflective surface. It can be done with water, a mirror, a crystal ball. Um, 
and it offer, offers an opportunity for self-reflection and reaching out to the shadow aspects of yourself and exploring your subconscious. But once it's mastered, once you become really good at it, it can be used for divination as well. Reflection spells, or re just reflection in general, is essentially used to reflect negativity back to its source, from whence it came. It's the only form of what is considered black magic that I will teach here, and most likely the only form of dark magic that you would need, really. Uh, and it's, it protects you from damaging yourself with darker magics. Everybody has their own practice, and to each their own, but the only type of dark magic that I use is reflection spells. We'll teach and explore these kinds of spells in a later series, uh, giving more depth to the actual spells and how to perform them. So the next thing that you would want to learn as you're starting out is how to open and close a circle. Opening and closing of a circle is the act of making a temporary space for yourself while you're doing a ritual or a spell. It creates a safe place to practice in and provides protection for you during your activities and your practice. Lucid dreaming, that is another one. This is, I have a long history in this and a lot of knowledge about it, so we will be teaching you how to do lucid dreaming. And this is a dream that you're in control of. You're able to interact with the dream and cause it to do what you want while you're in there. It can also be a source of divination and interacting with the source. Um, so those things are possible once you become more adept at lucid dreaming. We'll also be talking about a lot of protection magic. This includes cleansing, shielding, wards, banishing, reflection, purifying, totems, talismans, jars, and lots of other things that you can use in your daily life to protect yourself from incoming um, badness, incoming negativity, whether it's from a person, you know, like say somebody's giving you a hard time at work, you want to protect yourself from that, that happens a lot. You got that one person who hates your guts and wants to get you fired. <laughs> things like that. Um, or just negative energy, bad things happening. Uh, you can avoid a lot of these things by doing protection spells and uh, making sure that you're covered with that protection will become very noticeable in your life if you are doing it um, properly and regularly. So now we're going to talk about some different kinds of witches. There is a myriad. There's tons. I'm going to give you a list of a few, but there's tons more, and people pick and choose, and some are, you know, multiple different kinds. These are just kind of the basic ones. So there's a green witch. I'm a green witch, and they have a focus on healing, magic, apothecary, alchemy, herbalism, botanicals, food preparation. Uh, and medicine, actual pharmaceuticals. Um, they're also referred to frequently as a kitchen witch. So there's that one. There's a trad witch or a traditional witch. These are the, um, the ones that use the most ancient traditional magic sources they can find. They respect the oldest forms of magic. Uh, Trad witches will do a lot with the Kabbalah and things like that. Old, old magic. There's the Garner, uh, Garnerian witch, which follows Wicca. I'm not super familiar with that, as I have not studied any Wicca, really. So I kind of just looked it up, it looks like. Uh, main teaching takes a more modern approach to their craft, easily adding new practices as they find, find them. It's secretive, and one must become activated to join the practice. I don't know what that means, but activated. 
uh, they're sea witches. They have a close relationship with water and the sea. They use sand, shells, driftwood in their practice frequently. Hedge witch. These are witches that can communicate with the spirit, spiritual world and pass information between the two. Astral projection and earth-based magic is their focus. I do believe I have dabbled a little bit in hedge witchery. Um, okay, Dianic witches. Worship Diana. There's no men allowed. That's the, like, feminist witches. No men allowed in there. Ceremonial witches are all about customs and etiquette. Very proper, those ones. They use sources like the Lima, Enochian magic, and the Kabbalah. Elemental witches work with the basic elements, just like it sounds. Earth, air, fire, water, and uh, they use these in their spells. I think everybody kind of dabbles in that a little bit. A hereditary witch is born into witchcraft. They have family members or a lineage that supports and gives them their practice. They can be taught this by their mother or grandmother or father or grandfather, and it's frequently kept very private. Eclectic witches. They derive customs, practices, traditions, and culture from many sources and adapt and adopt as they see fit. They learn and then choose based on what feels appropriate to them. I do that as well. I think a lot of people do. Uh, solitary witch practices alone, uh, either by choice or lack of peers. Cosmic witches have a relationship with the universe, astrology, and celestial energies. They follow planets and practice according to their movements. Secular witches use the trappings of witchcraft, but do not consider themselves to be spiritual and they don't incorporate spirituality into their practice, tending towards more scientifically based studies, and the focus is on their own inner power as opposed to obtaining help from outside forces. Said, the practice of Norse centered on divination, prediction, and visions. There are many other types of witches and combinations of types. These are just a few to check out. Do what feels right. Your practice is your own. But remember, you must also study and learn. No knowledge worth, worth having is easily obtained. So those are um, just the beginning things that I felt like I wanted to mention and make sure that everybody knew what they meant. We will be continuing. I will try to put out a class or a video at least once a week on a certain topic. I'll be doing um, some herbal type stuff here in the very near future. And as we grow, once we get probably over like 500 maybe subscriptions, then we will put out our class on the tarot, which will be each individual card. Uh, and in that, I don't know much about Tarot, and we've decided that Sam will, Sam is very well versed, an extremely good reader, uh, and she will be teaching me how to do and read the Tarot as we go along in these classes. So it'll basically be a class for me about Tarot, and you'll get to learn along with me. But the next few classes will be on... Uh, different plants, herbal remedies, what you can use different plants for in your practice and your spells, what they would be appropriate for, uh, and I'll be using a lot of different sources. I will try to, most of my sources are in books or in my own head, just from 30 years of knowledge, so I will try to put the sources in the comments or in the description section as I am able or if I use a specific source or read from a specific source. Um, I do have books I'll be reading from just to give you a better idea about what some of these things are for and what studies are backing these things because there are studies now, lots of studies that back the uses now. So. I'll include those as I can and we will just move forward from here and 
try to give you some really good content. Uh, we will actually be providing real spells, how to do them, and the new scientific studies, the new archaeological finds, the history behind certain things, where these things are located, where they're uh, attested to in different sources. So we will try to be as informational as possible. But again, it is not all-encompassing. You do have to do your own research. We will provide as much as we possibly can between the two of us on the topics that uh, we love the best. And we hope that you will click like, subscribe, and help us to grow the channel and get better and learn how to do this so that we can put out some good information. Thank you so much for watching.